Maybe we'll start very soon. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Maybe we'll start very soon. Let me, get, let me get water real quick. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, while we're waiting for Max uh, to come back, how's everybody? It's been a long time we haven't streamed on YouTube, so that's pretty cool to see you guys. So Mike, Max is taking a little bit of water and then he'll be back. And we're gonna be able to start very soon. Here he is. All right. All right. All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Today, we have the pleasure uh, to welcome on the show uh, the one and only Max. Uh, Max is, you know, one of my first students at Holberton School San Francisco. He was part of cohort one. So the second one, uh, the first one who had like a something that looked like the checker that you have right now but like very rough <laughs> with not a lot of it, <laughs> as much as you guys have today um and you know we've talked a lot in, you know in the past uh, few months about you know deferment and cheating and like you know like the mindset that you need to adopt and um you know i you know max went through like all the steps uh through his journey as a student he saw like everything um, the only difference that it was like on site and not online, but essentially he went through the same program, um, you know, probably 90% um, the same as the one you're going through, whether you are a Holberton School student right now or an ALX student right now. So he has like uh, also like a little bit of uh, experience on the field right now. So it was like also like one of your uh, desire to talk to someone who, you know, been there and then like has spent like a few years, you know, after the school to see like, you know, what's the trajectory, how do they handle, uh, you know, finding the first job and, you know, like whether or not they have advice for that and then how they, you know, build on in their career. So Max, welcome to the show. Well, uh, no, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Um, hello everyone. Um, yeah. So, um, this is exciting. It's my first time doing something like this um, for the school um, online. Um, I talk to people in person, but this is different. So, um, yeah, I don't know where to start. So, yeah, so like you said, I was um, part of core one. Um, but when I, going, when I was going through the process the program, I started over again and I moved to core, core two, um, you know, and then um, and that, that, that was beneficial for me because I was really struggling <clears throat> struggling a lot and then um you know after i finished um even when i finished core two i was still struggling but um i went through the, the interview process and um eventually found a job um surprisingly pretty quickly because honestly i was on start all, all over again for um another time um because that's how bad i wanted it because what i was doing before i got to Holberton, i wasn't really um doing much of my life i, I was struggling with the job barely making any money and um i just knew i didn't want to go back there so um you know, at Holberton, it was very intimidating because I went to, a lot, of, a lot of my classmates were, they went to these top schools and they they had previous knowledge and they learned a lot faster than me. I um, also had like a learning disability. So that also hindered me, you know, but I just kept on trying. And um, so, it, but it changed my life, you know, now I do things that I didn't, never thought I was able to do. I've been traveling the country, had RV, traveling different states. I've been to different countries. Um, Everything I've, I've done lately is, has been because of Holberton and my um, desire to achieve and just never give up. So, um, yeah, sorry for the long intro, <laughs> but that's um, that's where I am right now, my current state. And um, whatever questions you have for me, 
please hit me up on LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. Um, I'm, I'm an open book, pretty straightforward, and um, I'll be very happy to answer your questions. Sounds good. Uh, thanks, Michael. Thanks, thanks a lot. Like, I know, like you, um, it's pretty cool to have you. Like, and, and everybody's like, you know, super excited to, uh, you know, ask like a few questions. But let maybe let's start with, you know, where you're coming from. Like, because like you know, you mentioned like there are like students, you know, who starting this, you know, with some prior experience and some without any experience. Did you have any experience in in computer science or like coding, you know, before you joined the school? No, I had none. I had none. I just knew. Um, I like always like video games are like um playing um, computer games and i it just got the, i got into um coding because um if you play video games they're like on, on a computer you mod um certain games i was like oh how can you do this and then i learned about um different operating systems like linux and i was like oh this is cool it's not like windows or something else so that's the bare minimum that i really knew and then um you know i i applied to different programs and they didn't feel right and so um No, I bet you had the Holberton. I found out about Holberton School through, I don't know, I don't know how I found out about Holberton School. And, um, you know, I went through the process, application process, talking on, on the forum at the time, doing um, the coding challenge that we had, uh, what was it, build a website and talk about it. And um, so, yeah, I had no knowledge. I had learned all that stuff just online and reading books and talking to my classmates um, before I got something, something into Holberton, Holberton School. That's pretty cool. And so what, were you in like studying something different before? Did you have a job or like, uh, what was your profile? I, <clears throat> I was delivered. I would, well, I played basketball for a long time, but that was in my twenties. But, um, before Hobart school, I was delivery. I was the delivery driver delivering potato chips, um, to stores. And, um, <laughs> you know, that was just something I did in between a job. Um, but I just knew it wasn't for me and I was, delivering stuff and I was like this is not for me this is not what I want to do in my life it wasn't how I pitched my life um when I was younger when I was in college I was playing basketball so um I just knew that I wanted to become an engineer somehow some way um at the time I thought it was impossible um but you know I just said forget it man this, I can't get any worse I can only go up, up from here so um you know I was basically making $16,000 a year um and that's no way to live so um it was either fail or just achieve and I just you know I found out about in school and went through the process and I couldn't be more grateful. Sounds good. So video games change your like, uh, you know, pushed you to, you know, change, you know, your job basically. <laughs> That's pretty yeah, cool. Well, somewhat, yeah, somewhat. And also like the way the world is, I saw the world changing, going more, more towards technology. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to be left, left behind. I wanted to see um, if I could do it myself, you know? Um, yeah. I, I Obviously like you had to be some kind of, knowledgeable when it comes to programming but um it takes a lot of determination you know when i when i before i got into it i thought everyone was a genius you know i'm not and i'm not downplaying myself or anyone else um you know i'm i'm a, i'm decently intelligent but i'm not a super genius you know what, what i thought of, what i thought you had to be um it's more about just being determined and just keep on trying no matter how many times you fail um so yeah so that's why sorry about answering the question like that <laughs> yeah so and, and like did you have the, the like i think like when you know what what was like very um you know cool about you is that like when you started the the school like you know we first like starting to speak and you already had like this mindset you know of like yeah like i i need to push and i like if i don't try i'm not gonna get you know this growth mindset that we try to insufflate into like you know all the whole button and alx students and you know i, I always talk about the fact that you know, this is one of the most important thing is the mindset. It's not like, it's not even the coding skills because with the mindset, you're going to get to there. If you only have the coding skills and not the mindset, you, you know, your progress is not going to be the same. And yeah. whether it's at school and your career, like your personal life doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> the mindset's everything, right? And, um, you know, did you, do you think that you got like part of this mindset as, you know, like, because you were like doing a lot of sport and like, I know that like, on my end, like when I do a lot of sport and I like, I don't like to lose. And so like, I train as much as I can. And like, I see like, like, you know, here was like something I don't do well. And so I'm going to spend hour into like studying videos and then training with my partners. Um, is it like, was it the, was it sport also that built this mindset you think? Yeah, no, I know you don't like to lose. I remember those days. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that, that's a different story. <laughs> um, you know, I never thought about that. Um, yeah, when I was playing basketball, like when I was in high school and middle school, and all that, going up when I was younger, that's all I really focused on. I wasn't really focusing on partying or anything like that, you know. Um, 
So I guess just that's always been in, in me just to work hard. Like I dedicate myself to basketball. Like Saturday nights I was doing like drills and whatnot or just watching game tape, studying the film. And the same thing when I was a student at Holberton, like like people would go out, you know, and don't get me wrong, I went out as well, but like there'd be Saturday nights, Friday, Friday evenings, Sunday evenings, I'll be at Holberton 12 o'clock at night um, just doing the work, you know, um, you know, doing questions over and over and over again till I got it, till I got it. Um, you know, and that honestly that sucked because there's plenty of times I'm a grown man and I was in front of the computer crying, like tears bawling in my, my eyes, like plenty of times, you know, and seeing my classmates um just doing their best, like killing it, like getting past a checker every time. And I'm here struggling. They're on question nine. I'm on still on the first one. I'm like, yo, this is this sucks, you know, and it does hurt. And like it still hurts till this day, but it gives me motivation, like, you know what? Just keep on trying. You want to get it eventually. And once I got it, it's like, okay, move on to the next thing, you know. And while like the whole routine, like every question built on the previous question for the most part, you know. So that helped me with, with, with knowing what to do. Um, so, yeah, that definitely, like, looking back, that sucked. I talked about other classmates. I was like, yeah, I think I had PTSD because um, I was struggling so much. But, um, you know, you had to go through that, especially if you know what you want to do. Um, like I said, I can't say this enough. But I just changed my life. Like, like I said, I like I want to. I, I'm sorry, I'm repeating myself, but <clears throat> I went to like all these music festivals. I went to Coachella last week. I went to some something called EDC. I mean, Coachella a couple of months ago, last month. I went to something, something called EDC two weeks ago. Um, went to a festival in Portugal, all over. Like, and I'm like, wow. And I, I was there at the festivals. I'm sitting here like, yo, this wasn't. This can't be possible if I didn't go to Holborn School. Like, you know, and like other things I've been doing. Like I said, at RV and just traveling the country. Like none of this, if I gave up, I would, you know, I want to be here. I want to be talking to you or students today. So, um, so yeah, I've always been a worker, you know, and, um, you know, I tell everyone like, and I'm ain't at my job. Like I, you know, I had actually had a, a team and I'm like, wow, I had a team that had to leave. People come to me, ask me questions. Like, right. like four <laughs> years ago, three years ago, I'm like, I would never thought like even before Hoverton, I'm like, I never thought I have a, my own actual team managing building infrastructure doing coding and interviewing people for a job you know and i tell people all the time when i interview them they like you know have the confidence like nah just look listen i tell my story you know and another thing that you said is like you have to be motivated like because a lot of people they're knowledgeable they're very great programmers but not motivated or they, they want everything to come to them easy and it's like no it's not like that even when you you finish the school you still got to grind out and even through the interview process, you still got to grind and keep pushing. So it's never easy till, till you finally get the job. And that's not e e easy. E that's not easy either. But I joke about this. I said the hardest part about um, being an engineer and uh, programming is going through the whole interview process. The hardest part for me today, and I've been doing this for six years, is going through Holborn School, getting through Holborn School and going through the interview process. After that, it was like, it's not a piece of cake, but that was the hardest part. So if you get through Holborn School, and keep on applying the things that you learned at home in school and into the interview process, you'll, you'll be good. Just don't give up. That's a, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, things to digest. Um, I think one of the, I mean, you mentioned a lot of things. Um, I think like, you know, there's a lot of students who are going through, um, you know, the, the process of, Hey, like I'm excited about, you know, coming at ALX and Holberton and then like, you know, I hit a wall because it's very hard and it's very hard for like two reasons. Most of the time there's the, you know, like a lot of them are not, uh, don't, do not have any background in computer science. And then they see other people, you know, going faster than them. And it's, uh, and it's really hard on the moral because it's very struggling because of, of that. Also because of the, like the, you know, the way we, we, we teach, which is like very different, yeah. but, um, well, you know, is there like any advice you can give like to those students, like who are, you know, struggling, but like, you know, feeling that they are, you know, like behind everybody else. Um, but like, you know, they, they still need to be motivated to continue on despite the fact that they feel that they're like so behind. Um, when, one of my advice is like, you know, never compare yourself to other people. You know, it's just a battle like between yourself and yourself a month ago. And if you feel that, you know, you have improved, then, you know, you're on the right track. Um, what would be like, you know, what did you, what did you think? And like, what was your, your thought process to overcome that? 
it's easy. I mean, people, people will laugh. I said, just don't give up. It's either you like it's either you sink or swim, and that's true. Like that's a choice. Like if you're in a um in the ocean and you're drowning, like you got to swim. You know, even if your head is an inch above water, you're still alive. You know, and that's how I felt. Like people were passing me by, and if I go to a, I'll tell you this honest truth. If I go to AL, ALX again, I'll probably be a struggling student again. You know, is that's just how it is. You know, um, but, but don't give up. But this is something that you want. And I'm sorry for me getting loud, but like, don't give up. And I tell people, I like, I'm honest. Like, I'm not the smartest person out here. I've never been the smartest person in school, college, um, anything. You know, but I, I always tried. You know, and that's everyone has something in them. You know, but everyone could try. You know. The only time you stop trying is when you're dead, you know? So it's, your, it's, it's just a choice, like, and it's being harsh, but, like, I'm telling people, like, all the time, like, I'm not smart. Like, I'm smart, but I'm not, like, book smart. I'm not, like, I don't get things so fast. And I know how I know how these students feel when you're, like, stuck behind and you see other people just killing it. Like, I, that, 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 that pain hurts. I know that feeling, but I'm telling you, like, just keep pushing. It doesn't matter you do the question 5, 10, 20 times, 30 times. Repetition is key um, and try different ways to figure out the problem. Also, um, you'll get it eventually, man. It doesn't matter if you get it um, week one or in a year or two. Like this is your life and you want to, you want to do this. Just keep trying. That's, that's my just straightforward answer. Just try and just do it and the job done. And, and also ask for help. Ask for help. Um, there's plenty of resources out there. Your classmates ask for help. Also. Thanks a lot, Max. You mentioned that if you were to do uh, ALX again or Hoboken again, it would be like a little bit tough. You know, what's what's your uh, let, let's talk about let's talk about your favorite projects. Would you oh, do you think oh, it would be the shell again? Could you huh? give the, the gates of the shell again? Oh man, this that that this this shell project was a oh man, I was, man, listen, I don't have a favorite project. I hate it all. No, I'm joking. All them I all my projects, I love them, you know, I because they gave me it gave me um, a different viewpoint of how things work, you know, build out the shell, you know, and go to go my interviews. They're like, Oh, you built out a shell. Like, can you explain this? You know, that's great. Like um, building out the Airbnb project, you know, that that's, that's great. Um, we had another project. What was, what was it? I forgot, but you know, I, I talked about it early on in my career and, you know, they just gave me the versatility that um, a lot of can other candidates for these roles didn't have. Um, but yeah, the shell project was definitely my, my, my favorite one. Cause you know, that was my really first time working with a team of other people. Um, I played a role in building up the shell as well. Um, you know, also my, my, probably my, my personal favorite project is my, my personal project at, at, um, at, before we ended, before I, um, graduated Harvard in school. Um, you know, that was a personal project for me, um, that I still want to work on, um, you know, we're having out the homeless, um, hopefully like building crowd crowdfunding for the homeless. Um, you know, that was personal for me. And that's like the project that I really clicked for me. Like, oh, wow, I know what I'm doing because that, that was a personal project. It's something I really believed in for myself. You know, don't get me wrong. Other projects that Hoping School gave me, they gave, they gave me the skills to do the project, the, my um, end of the year project. Um, so, yeah, but definitely the, the first one that sticks out for me is the shelf project because that was <laughs> a lot of long nights. My, my classmates, um, Spencer and everybody, I, and I miss my classmates a lot all the time, but um, that, was, that was a great time. Do you see, like, talk to uh, some of them? Yeah, I've been, I talk to some of them. Um, I see some of them once a, once in a while. Um, some other ones I need to reach out more, but um, you know, they're they're like my family, you know. And it's like every you go through life, um, you have milestones in your life. And me going to Hobart in school and going through that struggle and you know, sleeping wherever, um, that that was like one of my biggest memories of my life, you know. Um, so I, I definitely I definitely keep in contact with people as much as I can. All right. And so, and, and you mentioned like, you know, asking for help. I think this is also like probably key for a lot of people, uh, especially in this type of program, which is like, again, like peer learning based, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, know, how, you know, maybe one question is like, how do you find, how do you find the right partner you're going to resonate with and you're going to be able to, uh, to work with? Like, how did you find like your, your peer, like for like building the shell, for instance? Um, that, that, that's a great question because, you know, everyone has a different personality, you know, some people, they don't mesh well with others. You know, me, I felt like my personality get along with everybody, not everybody, but most people. Um, you know, I don't take offense to a lot of things, you know, but that's, that's not, that's not a criticism because I said everyone is different. 
you're going to find the person that, that messes with you. But on the flip side as well, these people had to be willing to help out the other, help out other people. And same for myself, I'd be willing to help out other people because when you're on a job, um, you got to help out others. And um, that's all part of it. So if you don't like helping out other, other people, you better get with it because that's what you're going to be doing at your job. Um, like a lot of team pair, um, pair coding with all your, um, your coworkers. Um, so it's all part of the job process, you know? And honestly, Julian, when I was going through over this, over the school, I was like, no, nah, it's not, it's not that important. Um, it's not gonna be like this on a job interview. And my first interview I was like, oh my, and I also nervous my first interview. And I, I bombed it so badly, but everything I did at whole at Harvard school was the same thing in my job interview. And I was like, oh, wow. I, you know, and I humbled myself, you know, but you gotta um, find that person, just ask around and don't get discouraged, you know, cause someone's gonna be out, be out there struggling just like you. And, you know, I found two people. I found someone who was a way better coder than me. And I found someone who was struggling like me as well. And, um, you know, we worked together. Um, and it was, that was helpful, but definitely open up your heart, open up your mind and help out each other as much as you can. Yeah. Thanks a lot for that, uh, for that advice. You know, I like that, like, uh, the advice that I give, like resonates like today with you saying it, you know, after you finish the program, cause you know, how it is right. Like a lot of students are like, ah, no, doesn't matter. You know, mm -hmm. like, see, I will never do this. Or like this interview prep, I will never do that. And then they're on the job and said, ah, oh, I should yeah. have done more of that. <laughs> or, or if you prep, I would say like, now nah, I have to like review everything because I did not, uh, you know, consider it like seriously enough. And now mm -hmm. I have to, you know, I have to uh, build, uh, you know, that thing again. Um, so yeah, and like even like, you know, sometimes you know, I had students who, you know, job interview was like, how would you build a shell? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's actually like uh, very close to, and like, if it's not exactly the same thing, there's like, again, like it's the mindset that we build, especially during the first month of, you know, building yeah. the foundations, <clears throat> the mindset of like, okay, going out there to find the questions, to find, you know, help, you know, asking a question is a very big uh, skill, actually. If you yeah. don't know how to ask questions, if you feel bad about asking questions, then, you know, it's your job is not going to be as, as good and as cool, and you're not going to be able to be, uh, you know, effective uh, enough. Um, so as you said, like, and, and same thing, like sometimes, you know, uh, and I, it was the same for me, like, uh, you know, I had a partner, uh, for a project and then just like, you know, we don't show up anymore. And so what do you do? Like, and there's like different attitudes, right? Like there's like the students who are saying, oh, I'm just going to stop because my partner is not here. So they, they create, you know, an excuse for themselves, like to, to mm -hmm. not, to not work. And like, there's other people who are saying, oh, great. I'm going to, you know, learn like twice as much because I'm going to have to do like the job of two people. And yeah. it's, it's, again, it's like going back to the mindset. And it doesn't mean that you can't, you know, like talk to other people if, you're, if your, you know, partner has left. But it's exactly the same in the job. You're always yeah, going to have like two or five and like two people and do like 80% of the job. And like, there's no, there's no other way. Like statistically speaking, it's the same everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. You know, like, uh, and I, I don't even want to mention Twitter who like laid off like 80% of the task force and like is working better now um just to give you like an idea but it's it's real like it's uh you know as you grow there's a lot more people who are not doing as much and you know we're going to join a startup like not everybody's at 100 percent uh no. and the company you know even more so um yeah it's like it's not fair but life's not fair like if you're waiting for life to be you're not going to be you know you're not going to be doing anything because like yeah. you know every step of the way it's uh it's a, you know, a little bit of a struggle. And as you, you know, you pointed out earlier, there's a lot of people because of, you know, the society and the marketing and the communication, like, you know, like this new culture out there that is saying, oh, everything should be easy for you. And, oh yeah, you're a champion all the time, like whatever you do. And that's, you know, that's really hard because then, you know, when, when, you know, when you go on to find a job then like the reality like hits you in the face, it's like, no, you're not a champion. No, you're not a princess. And, you know, now you have to work hard and like you've never done that before because like for the, you know, before that, for the rest of your previous life, everybody told you that everything was easy and you were entitled to things, but you're not. And, you know, like that's one of the things that I think, you know, a lot of students like about uh, the school and also like the one who are like leaving, that's what they hate about the school. It's like, hey, like this is the reality. I don't want to see it. I'm going to just like be gone. 
Yeah, I guess yeah, I can go. I can go into that as well. Um, yeah, yes, yeah, that's the truth. That's the truth. All right, so um, let's talk maybe about like you know, like you you have you know one of the example that you know I always like to talk about because you have differed once, and uh, just to give you like a background, um, you know, at at ALX like the program's the same, you know, roughly. Um, but before before we put this into um, uh, into production, you know, this year, like the beginning of the year, there was no deferment. And so now there's a deferment and like at the end of the month, you have to have like 80%, except month, uh, no, month one is 80% and after that, 70%. Otherwise, you have to restart the month. Mm -hmm. And we put this like for, like for two reasons, right? Like the first one is that, as you said, every project builds, builds on top of like the previous ones uh, in the program. And so that means that like if you do not master like a, a, a certain minimum, then it's going to be very hard for you uh, to continue on and be successful. And then you're going to be like saying, oh, like, how do I do this? And then like people are like, you know, push to cheat a little bit uh, because they, you know, falling behind. It's very hard. They look at everybody <coughs> succeeding. And, um, you know, like so, you know, we also have released like a software called Kimba to make sure that. You know, we catch people who are cheating because it's very important. We don't want to have like students with the certificates who do not know everything, anything. Mm -hmm. And also like to make sure that like, the students are like taking it seriously. Um, you know, like defer, like deferring is the right option. If you like, you have to put like your, your heart at it. Of course, like you want to work as hard as possible. You don't want to take the deferment as an excuse again, like to like, okay, I'll do this later like next month. Uh, but if you have worked hard, like then the deferment, and you, you don't hit you know, like the minimum knowledge that you need to have to continue on, then it's a good idea to to defer. And then there was a lot of naysayers, like, you know, when we released this, like, oh, no, you should not defer. This is like failure. This is very bad. Um, you know, like you, you, you know, like you, it's better even to cheat sometimes, you know, I, I had uh, mm -hmm. as a comment. What, what would you say to a, to a student? Well, I mean, let me ask this question real quick. How many times can you defer? Is there like a limit? Yeah, no, so that's the beauty of it. So like uh, the deferment, you have like three, uh, no question asked deferment automatically. You go online on the internet, you say, okay, I want to defer. You choose the cohort you want to restart with. And then you're going to restart the month with this cohort when they get to that point. After the, the third time, you have to like uh, talk to the staff to make sure that you're not, you know, you're actually using this uh, chance that we give you. Because, you know, like, you know, everything's free at ALX for the students, but we have like, rents you know so we are paying for it and yeah, so we just want to make sure that you are not taking the you know the the like the spot of someone you know who would not get into the program because we're limited somehow um so like at the end of the day like but if you if you show that you're working hard and then you're doing like all the things then we're never going to say no to you so okay Spencer is in unlimited okay yeah so that makes fun so listen if anyone's got she got kicked out of school it should have been me because that was like i said i was so bad at the school um, you know, you know, um, I actually got kicked out a long time ago, but y'all, you, everyone believe you, you guys believed in me, you know, so you can't make progress without failure. That's, that goes with anything in life. That goes with a baby learning how to, how to crawl, walk. That goes with you trying to go through your, from first grade, second grade to whatever, trying to get promotion. You're going to fail. You got to fail. Um, I embrace failure, you know? It, it, yeah, of course it's, it, it stinks because you're doing, you're working hard. If you were doing what you're supposed to do and you're failing, yeah, it's like a slap in the face. Like, um, put for all this effort and it, it hurts your self esteem. But you look in the mirror, like you gotta say, so what? Like, okay, just just do it again. Like, this is what, like I, like, like I said before, this is what you want to do. Just just accept the failure, you know. And and ask yourself, did you learn from it? What did you learn? You know, if you learn at least one percent, then you learn something and just build on top, build on top of it, you know. So don't, yes, I can sit here and say, don't get discouraged. You know, I was discouraged plenty of times throughout the whole, my whole cohort. I was discouraged, you know, but I kept on progressing, you know, and I got better, you know. So, yeah, take that, take that, that, that loss, take that pain, but use it as motivation and just, and just go again, you know, and, and ask up, are you trying as hard as possible as, as possible within your life? You know, everyone's life is different. Uh, some people have more time than others. Are you doing the best that you can? Um, you know, when I was at Hobart in school, um, you know, sometimes I, this sounds kind of harsh, but I did sacrifice some sleep sometimes because I was like, you know what, I'm not a little bit behind. Um, within reason, you know, I wasn't up all 24 hours a day, but 
I was up at one o'clock and I wake up at um, six and go back, go back, to, right back to school or even five, go right to go right back to school. Um, you know, just, you know, just like I said, believe in yourself because no one else will believe in you. Just, just believe in yourself, you know, so um, take that deferment, you know, and don't cheat. You can't. I mean, I cheated as well when I first got to school, um, you know, cause I was behind, you know, and I remember the school made an announcement of if you if you'll cheat, you get kicked, kicked out. And unfortunately it happened to a couple people. And, um, you know, um, it just only helps. You can't cheat an interview process on a lot, especially um, a live interview. Um, you can't cheat. Um, so, you know, it's just building up knowledge and just helping you out. So, like I said, just do your best and don't don't get so unmotivated from the deferment because it's only going to make you better. So, like, a uh, quick question. Do you regret having uh, deferred? No, no, not at all. I was, I was deferred I was deferred twice a second time. Um, I remember talking to you in the hallway and you asked me um, some computer science questions and I was so nervous. I was so, so ashamed because I was like, man, I'm about to, I'm about to defer again. Um, you know, but of course I, I got a job, you know, and um, and so, no, is you know, the first, the first time I deferred, I, I knew I had to do it because I was behind. I, I wasn't ready. And if I didn't never defer it, I would probably, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Um, you know, The second time I was thinking about deferring, that was a little bit like, damn, like, wow, here I go again. But I, I had the skills. I knew what I was doing. I just wasn't comfortable with certain concepts or current th current um, certain situations. Um, but like I said, luckily, I, I, I worked hard for a new process, um, looking for a job. And I was blessed enough to find a job um, pretty quickly. Um, and so, no, that was that was a blessing for me to defer. You know, and a lot of other programs don't let you defer. They, once you don't do well. You fall fall below a certain percentage point, you're out, you know, and um that will that will make me very nervous. So I definitely appreciate the school allowing me to start over. All right. So I, I think thank you very much for saying this and you know reinforcing, you know, <laughs> what I try to say to everybody all the time. It's like um, you know, if you differ once, twice, six times, you know, ten times, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it's it's not a race. Um, it's not, you know, the Olympics. There's not only one champion. There's like tons of jobs out there. So as long as you finish and you go as fast as you can, you know, you you work as hard as you can. But, at, you know, at one point, everybody has their limit depending on the context. And, yeah. you know, if you need more time, just you need more time and that's it. It's like most of the software engineers in the US are trained like at the university and it takes them four years. So, you know, even in a program which is like 12 or 18 months, if you restart every single month, you know, once, then it's still going to be like less than like most of the people in, in the United States. Um, so, um, yeah, not a race. I know like everybody wants to be the best all the time because, you know, because that's, you know, the society is like talking about those people all the time. And we think like this there's only one spot, uh, you know, it's at the top, but like there's a lot of tops. And it doesn't matter again, it's like a competition. Yes, it is, but only against yourself like a month ago. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, like in, and cheating, like you're only cheating yourself. At the end of the day, like if you want a job, you can't cheat yourself because you're not going to be able to cheat your way in um, an interview process. Um, uh, and even if you do, then like there's the job at the end of the day, you need to ship and, you know, put things in production <laughs> to work. Um, yep. And there's deadlines, you know, and so like, you know, you, you can't cheat your way out like all the time um so yeah thanks thanks for the thanks for the feedback um and now that we talked a little bit about you know like your life at the school you know like talk to us about like how did you find the first job like was it easy how many like applications did you put in uh you know what was what was the job like what was the first company you know like did you have like different offers like you know you know tell us a little bit more about that oh man oh Right after Hoboken school ended, I went back home and um, I just applied all day. I, I was applying to jobs and I was studying. Like that was just I did Hoboken school at, at home um, every day. Um, so my first job was with the clothing company called J Crew as a DevOps engineer. Um, that probably happened within a month after leaving Hoboken school. Um, but like I said, I don't know how many applications I sent out. I never tracked it. I just sent out a lot of applications. Um, I set my filters to like the jobs posted the last 24 hours, um, jobs I never, I haven't seen. Um, I did everything. I put in keywords um, on the search and the search options, um, you know, and people in my, in my core were surprised that I found a job so fast. Um, 
I just said, I just made it my life. Just like Holberton, it was my, it was my life. You know, I, it doesn't, doesn't stop, you know, and it doesn't, and even when you finish, like, it's not easy. You got to keep on working. And um, I don't, I wish I could answer the question how many applications I sent out, but just like I said, I, from nine till maybe eight o'clock at night, maybe sometimes nine, 9 p.m. in the evening, I was just studying and sending applications um, through different job sites, um, asking people. Um, I, had like, I had like four different job offer, offers by Seth the J. Crew, um, you know, which was pretty surprising, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's just like I said, it's that your work's not done after you finish ALX or over in school. It's just, you keep on grinding and keep sending out applications, you know, because listen, I had a lot of people in my court and from different courts talking about, oh, they felt like the school should have helped them out or did this and that. I'm like, no, nah, the opportunity was that's just them giving us something to work off of. And we do, we do the rest of the work ourselves. Like I wasn't looking for no one to, and no disrespect to hold my hand or, you know, anything like that. I mean, of course, Hoban school, they gave me um, connections to other people, other jobs to talk to them, which was great. But, you know, I just wanted the opportunity to work all, to um, make my skills better. And that's all I really asked for. So, um, yeah, don't expect anything. Just expect hard work from yourself and just push yourself and just keep applying until you find a job that you want. And also, find a job that you want to work to work at. You know, I worked at companies that, you know, wasn't really for me. It wasn't a good fit. You, and you might realize this when you get further along in your career. Um, but make sure, you, like, the um, the jobs line up with your skill set. That works for me because other people in my cohorts, they work for, they apply for jobs that really wasn't really part of their skill set. And, of course, you can learn. But I, I strictly part of jobs that lined up with what I what I was interested in and my skill set, you know, which which I which I achieved at at Hobart in school, um, which is more so like the Linux operating system side of things, infrastructure, uh, containers, um, also like programming as well. But it wasn't a full like on like web development um, job, you know, which I would crash and burn at because I wasn't that wasn't my strength. Um, so yeah, yeah, figure out what what you're good at and um, just focus on that. In my opinion, it's not a not an answer for everybody. <clears throat> no, I think it's a it's it's the right way to put it. Um, I totally agree with you. <clears throat> like you were like, like at one point, like there's something you like, there's something you're very good at, and and you know, at school you want to be like a generalist, like you want to learn like a little bit of everything, but then you want to mm -hmm. specialize and be like recognized for that specialization, because um, the world is specializing, and so you have to be you know a little bit specialized, not like. 100%, you still like be like, like need to understand like every layer of the uh, of a system, you know, like if you're building API, it's, it's good to understand how, you know, the database, you know, are, are set up and how, you know, the front end is set up to make sure that the API yeah. is properly built. Um, but like then, like maybe you're going to be, you know, like the, the best at being, at doing APIs or like DevOps or infrastructure, or like whatever it is. It's, uh, you know, it's a good way to think about it. There's like different strategies, like in this one is, is a very good one. And you have to adapt, like depending on your, you know, on your personality, everybody's different, as you mentioned uh, earlier. So, like, yeah. definitely, I can agree. Yeah, yeah. You definitely got to adapt. I mean, another thing, um, and I'm sorry to bring this up, and, um, like, people from past cohorts that graduated, they complained about the school not using, like, the latest technologies. And I, I told students, like, yo, it's not about that. Like, they gave us, they showed us how to learn. So we can learn the latest technologies like that. Not like that, but we can learn it faster than, other people, you know, um, one thing that benefited greatly from from Hobart School was was learning everything from front end to back end to everything in between. You know, that gave me um, uh, a step ahead of other candidates. So I that really helped me out as well. So what was what was the? Do you remember what was the uh, the interview like? Was it like a lot of hands on? Was it a lot of questions like the first one? <laughs> well, okay, it was first. It was oh man. It was three phone interview, no, two phone interviews, one video interview, and then two on sites. Once again, the hardest part of oh. this, this, yeah, one of the hardest part about this this industry is for me was going through the school and then the interview process. And now, now, now it's still going through the interview process. Once you get the job, you're like, okay, it's it's a little bit it's a little bit easier. Uh, but it was just like me being a homework in school, like when the students, like we used to pair with students, ask like certain questions. Or in front of the whiteboard with Guillaume and like going through like project um, programming um, questions, coding questions, or um, it was just the same, basically the same thing as the school. Um, I can't really think of anything 
that much different. Only thing that's different, and I don't know if you do this now, is sometimes when I, in an interview, I, I interview with like four people, at a, four different engineers at a time, you know, and they try to, sometimes they try to trip you up, you know, so that's why don't cheat because if you cheat, you'll get caught. But if you, if you do all the work, you can't get tripped up. Like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Like, and um, like when, also like same thing when you told us like, ask questions during, during the interview, uh, really explain yourself, talk, talk, talk. That's the same thing with an interview, you know, not for all interviews. Sometimes you might get a bad interview or they might have a bad mood, but for 90% of the interviews, it's the same thing I did at school. Um, and it's going to be a shock for a lot of people, but it's just, it's just the truth. Um, only difference is you get a, now you get a salary once you, once you pass. Um, but it's, it's, for me, it's the same thing. So take this, take this seriously. Um, even interview yourself. That's one thing I did. I interviewed myself. I, I taught myself. Roll things down on the whiteboard on paper, taught myself. Um, but it's all this, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Just stay at it. And uh and, and so what what was the like the the hardest or like the strangest questions you got at the interview uh for a job? Strangest question. I don't even know. Uh man, you know, the hardest question is always building out um infrastructure. Um, or working with different algorithms, you know, I, you know, but the strangest, huh? it's more, it'll be more like, like, um, like emotional questions, like, um, how would you react to, like, I'm, I'm like, I had a question, like, how would you, how do you feel working with two transgenders individ individual? I'm like, oh, I don't care. It's fine. It's <laughs> you know, like, like me, like, I don't care. But it, it, for that, the company that's did ask that, that kind of question. Um, So that's that's one that really stuck stuck, stuck out. Um, coding wise, I don't really have any any strange questions. I mean, there are hard questions, you know, that you really um had to break down. But that's probably the strangest question I had to had to answer. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. Like companies right now, are like really focusing on like diversity and inclusion, and you know, that some sometimes mm. it's um, it's part of the process now. Yeah. Like it's yeah. uh, it can be deroting like if you're not prepared for that. Um, yeah. All right, so like, and so like first job, and then like what makes you move to the second job? So second job was uh, I don't remember the name of the company. Pipe, Pipe Stream. Pipe Stream, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was probably my um, really greatest experience as SR, DevOps SRE cyber reliability engineer. Um, I learned a lot working at that company. Um, that was an artificial intelligence company. They built out chatbots for different companies around the, around the world. Um, you know, and I really got really worked with every tool I was coding. I was doing everything. I was doing front-end development, uh, back-end, um, working on AWS within the cloud, Kubernetes, going out microservices, um, deployments at four o'clock in the morning. Um, I would get um, page duty alerts at two, saying our server's about to fail, what are we going to do, writing up post-mortems. Like, you know, unfortunately, COVID happened and they had to make cutbacks, you know, but that was my, I really loved working at Pipestream. Um, you know, it gave me, a lot of experience and, um, you know, I wish I was still there, but stuff happens, you know, I, mean, I move forward to different, different opportunities and roles, but that was like, like I said, it was a great learning process. I was learning on the job. I was getting paid for it. Um, you know, and my boss at the time, he said, he, he interviewed a lot of people and he said, listen, I liked you because for one, you didn't know everything. You didn't, you didn't act like you knew everything. Um, you said like, I don't know this, but you still talked about it. You broke it down. And, I wasn't a specialist at anything, but I knew at a broad skill set of stuff across the board. You know, once again, thanks to um Hobart in school. Um, so yeah, that I, that was like my favorite job up until now. Um, in my current um engineering career. That's cool. So it sounds like a, a job where you have to do everything, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was my boss and me. Yeah. So the first. Oh, it was just your boss and you. Yeah, at the time. Yeah. Oh, well, it's a small team. Yeah, you have to do everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and and, um, and then like then and then the third job. Like, how did you move to the to the last one? Oh well, in between that, so COVID happened, and I went to a company called Outside Medical, right? And um, that was weird. That was weird. I love Outside Medical, Medical too. They're they're based out of California. I love them. I love my boss. Um, also having a great, also having a good boss is great for your role. But um, I love my boss. But they had a contract with the government. Um with the VA at the time. So um, 
but the interview, interview process was weird. It was like almost close to a year, you know? And um, so they asked me all these questions and it got real personal about like, and you used to ask me about weird questions. They asked me about like, oh, what I think about the president? What I what, what am I um, feeling about the country, you know? And me, I'm so um, nonchalant, I just went along with it. Like, okay, I'm interested to see where this is gonna go. They asked me real personal questions and they told me what it's really for, you know? Um, so there's a lot of background checks and stuff like that. So I was at outside medical and then um, I was contracted out to the VA and they liked the work I did over there. And they asked me if I wanted to work for um, different branches of the government. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, you know, so I was a private contractor for a while um, and that was great. You know, I um, um, worked for the CIA for a little bit, you know, I had my own team building on, build on infrastructure. Um, I really can't go into detail of what I was doing, but you know, certain people when they're on out on the road, they have certain apps, like think of something like your own personal um, app for yourself, like an Uber app for yourself or whatever, um, for just for you, you know, we, we did stuff for that, for, for them, make sure this stuff is up and running, um, whatever they needed. Um, it was up to us, my team, you know, and that was my first time having the team. And I was, that was very nerve wracking, you know, cause they're coming to me like, you know, Oh, what about this? I'm like, yo, you, and I'm like, I'm, and I'm like, I think in my head, like they know more than me, you know, some people that have more experience than me. Um, but it's all about your mindset and how you talk. You got, and also you have to be able to talk to people. Um, you know, I'm shy. I'm very introverted, but when it comes to, when it comes to it, when it comes to work or talking to a bunch of people or some talking in front of a, a huge crowd, I, I just, something turns on with me and I, I talk. Um, so yeah, that, that also helps as well. Being taught, being, having personality and talking. Um, but yeah, that was my last job having a team, but unfortunately, um, there are a lot of tech, tech layoff, layoffs in, in uh, the United States right now. I was just laid off um, last month, and, you know, um, which, was, which was, you know, it sounds crazy, but it was good for me because they laid, laid off my team and a lot of work fell on me. And um, there was a lot of work being done. And then mentally, I was, I was feeling exhausted, um, you know, so that laid off was a blessing, a blessing in disguise. But now I'm trying to get back to work now after my, after my break. So how long, how long did you take uh, of a break? And what, what exactly did you do? You mentioned a little bit of, of that uh, earlier. Uh, but let, let, uh, you know, give us some uh, some dream. Oh, man. All right, let me think. So right now is June 1st. Uh, oh, wait, it's been longer than, than a month. It was two months. I got laid off March 31st, exactly on that day. Um, so from April till last week, I was just traveling. Um, once again, thanks, thanks for holding in school. I wouldn't be able to do this. You know, I saved my money. Uh, I'll spare my money. Um, once again, and also we all know mostly I'm, I'm not in most countries. I, I, I assume that being an engineer, it pays pretty well. Right. So I was smart my money. I mean, I saved up at night, nice, nice little nest, nest egg. So I got a, got an RV, rented an RV and just traveled around the um, United States. Um, went overseas. Matter of fact, I'm going to Turkey in a couple of weeks as well. Um, but yeah, I was going through different States, just traveling by myself, went through all these different Music festivals was something I'd never done before. I told myself because I'm shy, like I said. So I was like, let me do something different with my life. I wanted to meet people, talk to people. And um, I said, you know, the best thing for me is go to music festivals and just meet people. And that's what I did. And I had the time of my life. I saw all these different musical act, acts. I know some yeah, people from, from Afro on here. You know, I saw Burner Boy a couple of times. Met him, met him once. Um, Uncle Waffles. All these different, um, I'm, I'm a piano acts. Um, Hip hop artists, EDM acts, rock art, everything. Like I did everything within this past two months. It was just crazy. And like I look back at the videos I have, it's like, wow, this is you know, my friends, my friends are like, wow, you did all this stuff. And they think I'm living on top of the world. It's like, no, nah, it's just like something I, I want to do for myself. And I just did it, you know. So that goes back to not giving up. So um, yeah, these past two months have been really, really great. And like one of the best, uh, once again, one of the best times of my life. I, um, I'm gonna do it again next year because it was just great. It was such a great experience, you know. But it doesn't have to be music festivals. It be something whatever you want to do, you know. Like I said, work hard, make your goals, and just live your life because you only have one. In my opinion, you only have one life, so enjoy it. You seem to really enjoy life. So um, most of the time, where people are, you know, let go and then they're like very stressed. You you feel like very uh, calm and you know you know very happy and like how do you how do you deal with that? Like, um, you know, when I lost my job at Pipe Stream, I was I was disappointed. You know, I love the company, I love my boss. You know, so I took 
I took I was I was sad. I'm not gonna lie, I was sad for a while, but you can't be sad for so long because opportunities will pass you by, you know. So I was sad, but I was still applying the jobs. You know. So um, you know, like I said, I was like I was crying from the computer in Hobart school, but I still did the work. Because no one cares about your tears besides you. People might say, Oh, it'll be okay, but they gotta move on with their life. You gotta do what you have to do. So I mean, that lost by um his last job, you know, but like I said, I was I was overworked. I was not overworked, but it was a lot on me. And, um, you know, I, I miss it. I was, I was still there, but that's life, you know. But I, I believe in myself, and I, I believe I had the skill set to find another job. So um, now I'm back here talking to everyone now. And But after this, I'm apply for more jobs and just keep keep pushing, you know. But like I said, don't let the sadness get the best of you. And long story short, to be honest, I'm being as candid as possible. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure I suffer from depression. I get sad. Uh, from time to time, but you know, you got to keep on pushing, you know, and you know, it, it could always be worse. You know, I'm not living on the street. I'm not, you know, and people might not notice, but when I was at Hobart School, I was basically living on the street, uh, both the rules that lived out the school a couple of times, I got yelled, I got in trouble with Julie a couple of times, lived out my, my, my car, you know, sometimes I slept on the street, you know, don't feel bad, but it, I had, it had to be done, you know, and I, I know that feeling of being rock bottom. Or maybe what my my thoughts rock bottom. So um, yeah, don't be sad, but just keep keep walking, put one foot foot next to the, next to the other. You know, keep moving forward, um, and just appreciate what the opportunity that, that you have. Wise word, uh, Max. Um, I wish I can take two months of vacation. I'm gonna talk to my boss about it. I don't know, like <laughs> Wait, you can, but you can't. <laughs> I, right, it's just me, myself, and I right now. You know, I'm looking for, I am looking for the life that you have right now, but right now it's me, myself, and I, so I can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just FYI, uh, Max, we have like openings. So um, if you want to apply, like we can talk a little bit about about it. Um, I'm mm -hmm. trying to recruit Max. It's been a, like a few months now, but he was on vacation. So it's been hard to talk to him. So now um, he's like, <laughs> oh no, I have to, I, I'm going to have to answer him. Um, it probably might, but. I'll be so nervous talking to you, Gil. I'll be, I, I already know. I'm like, oh, man. It'd be so nervous. <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think it would be cool. I think it would be cool. And now, like, I think probably you can teach me a lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm 100% sure. That's a, that's a, that's a fact. Um, so, how, so I want to ask, like, one last question about your career. Like, you, you mentioned that you had, for the first time, a team to manage. How was like? How did you deal with the transition? You you, you know, you mentioned that it was like a lot of pressure. Um, was it because it was new, or like it was like hard to interact with people, or like you know have everybody relying on you? How was like the HR part of it, like managing people? Managing people is fine, you know. I, myself, like I tell people, like outside of work and in work, on myself. Um, so I just talk to them. The, the hardest part is like talking to the CTO. Um, you know, make sure you, you hire the right people, um, make sure you're doing the right, going in the right um, direction, um, using the right um, tools for the company, um, you know, and also like I had to make a change within the company. They were using out some little um, outdated code. I was like, we need to make a change, you know, but that's hard because that's what they were used to, you know, um, so that's hard to present. So managing the team is good. You have a good team, that is fine. Um, it's just talking to the higher ups. That's the nerve wracking part, you know, because in my head, like I know what I'm doing, but I'm like, wow, I'm still I can't believe I'm still at this level. You know, I mean, I still I still can't believe I'm I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing. But the truth is, I am doing what I'm doing. I, and I do know what I'm doing. Um, so I just had to believe myself because honestly, there's plenty of times in my day, plenty of times I don't believe in myself, you know, still to today. Like I'm not as smart as the next person. Even people on my team, like, you know, I, some some guy on my team went to MIT killing it, you know, but. I had something that he didn't have, you know, and, but that's part of the team. Being part of the team, you put to balance each other out and uh, work together and you form as a team, you're pretty much one person as a team. So um, having the right team is important and just, you know, just believe in yourself at the end of the day, believe in yourself. That's it. You know, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't feel like I talk like a lot of, I don't, I don't feel like I'll talk like very intelligently, like when it comes to tech, but I know what I'm talking about. And I've been talking to a lot of people who are, much more senior than me, but they, they, they said, Oh, wow. I learned from you. Thank you for telling me this. I'm like, Oh, oh wow. I, I do know what I'm talking about somewhat. So, um, leaving yourself, that's, that's it. You know, and I know it's cliche to say, if I could do it, anyone, anyone could do it, but it's, it's true. 
you know, and um, if you ask any of my, my other classmates, they like, they probably tell you the same thing. Like, I was not the smartest person. If I show you my grades from home to school, you'd be like, wow, this guy he was struggling. But just believe in yourself. That's that's it. It's. I think it's really interesting, like Max, but like you keep saying that you are not the best, you're not that good, you you know, you're not saying this intelligently and everything. But like, I think you have to take a step back and look at your career and like uh, understand that, like for instance, like your last job was at the CIA, and like only a very small fraction of people can achieve that level. Yeah. And on top of that, you had a, G a team, right? So yeah. same thing, like it's even less people. So like you have to like you know. Uh, probably like work a little bit more on like recognizing where you are right now. You're not the same, you know, person as, as you know, you were as a student. It's like, it's pretty incredible to have watched like your career. Like, you know, we've, we've touched base like a few times throughout like the years. And, uh, you know, it's every time, like, you know, I, I see a Max, which is like, has grown so much. Like it's, yeah. uh, it's like, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's the, and it's the best gift, you know, like for me and I know Guillaume is very proud of you too. So. I just want to okay. interject that, like, man, like, I'm so proud of you. Like, it's incredible. Um, Thank you. Is there, like, any, like, you gave, like, a ton of advice to students. Uh, before we go into, like, maybe we take, like, a few questions. Uh, is there, like, anything that, you know, we've missed during, uh, you know, this conversation that you really want to uh, to tell the students? Mm, no, I don't, I think I, I don't think I missed anything. I know once I got off this call, Oh, something popped in my head, but um, nothing I can really think of. I hope they ask me questions, so I, I want to really answer the questions if I can. Um, but no, nothing popped up in my head. You know, I, I just like I said, I, I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity that you gave me to talk to the students and even attending the school because it changed my life. Yeah, so you, I'm, I'm really grateful that you thanks the school. But like one thing that you know, I have to say, and like everybody needs to hear is that. We give you tools and then like it's up to you and so you have to be grateful to yourself because you did the work and um you know i know like so like you know your career like is amazing and i know like some of the students are coming in and like they're like working hard and they were struggling on the side personally they do like you know jobs at the same time i don't think i could have done that you know in both conditions yeah. so like yeah. to me like you know you max and like all of you like a lot of the students who are listening to us like this is so incredible what you're doing. So like, keep moving. As you said, Max, it's like, it's not going to be easy as long as you know, it. when you face, you know, the, the wall, you knew that you would encounter it and, you know, just like keep moving and keep climbing yeah. and keep grinding. And eventually you get there um, and just like do it in the right, the right way. You just don't cheat. And, you know, uh, and it's okay to be like, sometimes, you know, like have your mood down, but like, just like keep moving it's okay to be a friend, but we're the friend, um, you know, like stuff like that. Um, all right. So let's, uh, do you have like a little bit more time to take some questions, Max? Yeah, all the time. Not all the time. I'm right. yeah. You're still on vacation, I know. <laughs> yeah, so shit. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> no, no one called me. No one, no Slack messages. Oh, another thing, my fault. So, yeah. So do you, do you, do you still do stand-up? Uh, not, not at ALX. Okay, never mind. Yeah, do, so but we do it at uh, at Robertson School. Yeah, so yeah, even like stand ups were the same when I when I got, when I got the um my first job. Like, oh wow, they do stand ups here. Um, so that was something like, oh, you know, Hobart School is pretty much the same thing as my job. You know, um, so yeah, that's another thing I forgot to talk about. Oh yeah, I, re I remember those days. Um, and and um, so guys, so guys, we're gonna take questions on uh, on Twitter, and and uh, I'm gonna give you the mic um while while we are waiting for people to raise their hands uh on twitter um i remember those days where like we we did the stand-up it's been a long time because now like it's it's you know like i'm focusing on alx now and like yeah. it's online and i'm like we're looking at you know how can we like bring that up uh you know back up but like in the online version we haven't found it like the re we haven't found the recipe yet but uh, i hope one day we we find it and uh, and so can you can you explain to because like you know whole button school students who are listening today like they know what is a stand up but like can you explain to um, you know like ALX students what is a stand up uh, while we're waiting for questions? Yeah, so every day we had a stand up, a daily stand up of what's going on within um, by the time at the school what we're working on. Um, sometimes uh, a student would present 
something that they that's going on within their life or something that they like to do to the students. You know, it's basically a general conversation amongst um, your peers to talk about your current life situation or the current situation at school. Um, and even that, like, I had those stand-ups and then at my job, we had my team team stand engineering stand-ups, you know, with my own team to talk about our progress, what we're working on, each individual's working on something, what they're struggling with. Like I said, same thing at school. Like, if you're struggling with something, um, you talk about it. So with my engineering team stand-ups, like, we'll talk about, like, I'm struggling here. I need help with this. You know, it's the same thing, um, which was crazy to me. Um, it's the same thing, talking about it. It's all about teamwork. And um, so, yeah, even using Slack, like, my team was using Slack and stuff like that. So that was that was funny. Um, all that. Is so, like I said, Overton was pretty much the same thing as working at the job. I just wasn't getting paid for it, you know. Um, I was getting paid with knowledge. So that's that was the difference. So that was my view of stand-ups um, for um, over to school and, and at the job. All right. Thank you. All right. So um, let's take a few questions before we leave. Uh, maybe DHV, you want to start? Hello. For Max, um, my first question is: um, If Max is supposed to go back in time, what would he have done differently? Because he differed twice, and I want to know what he would have done differently to even enter the S program in the first place. My second question is the fact that um, he completed S program was it full? Oh, I think. Okay, Julian froze. I think he froze. Okay, we got three questions. Did you uh, did you hear them? All right, so maybe uh, DH, DHV, I'm sorry, can you repeat that one question at a time, please? Uh, I, I wait, wait a second, because I think oh, Max is reconnecting. Okay, Max is back. Can you, re okay, can you repeat the questions, but like once at a time, please? Maybe uh, DH, DHV, sorry, can you repeat that one question at a time, please? Okay. Uh, so time okay so so the question is uh what would you have done differently max if you had to redo the program um to like succeed like a little bit better hmm. oh i would have uh, so when i first got accepted to holborn school there was um a guy individual uh first person i met a guy named uh, justin marsh intelligent oh my goodness he was he was killing it, you know. So before we got to Harvard School, we would talk about, you go through um, the C programming book and go through the questions. Um, and he was, in my opinion, he's probably going through the, he probably went through like a good portion of the book and I didn't do that. My thought process was like, oh, I'll get, I'll, I'll learn it when I get there, you know, cause I was working with him and he, he was way ahead of me. Um, and it was, it was discouraging, you know. So looking back, I would, I would, definitely prepare myself more before I got to before I got to the school by going through the, the oh, recommended wait, Max. books. Max, I think uh, people on Twitter cannot hear you. Guys, can you raise your hand if you can? Oh, hold on. Uh, oh, you want to mute? Okay, I just sent, sent a request, I think. Uh, can you hear me now? No. We can hear you on uh, YouTube, but not on Twitter. Can you disconnect on Twitter and like come back? Yeah. Thank you, DHV, for mentioning it. Max is reconnecting and uh, he'll be back soon. Yeah, here it is. I think it's a semi-group. 
or crust again. Okay. Yeah, but you disappeared again. Can't see you anymore. Oh, and you froze on on YouTube also. You might have like a on, me, connection issues. Let me hold on. Let me change. Let me change my change my question real quick. Mm -hmm. So while we're waiting on Max, let me try to guess what he's gonna say. So what would he have done differently? Hmm. I think knowing Max, he would say something like, uh, ask, ask questions like, you know, earlier in the program, you know, like don't be shy, this is part of the program, like find somebody that you're gonna be able to work with. Um, and, you know, like trust the process and, and probably he's gonna mention, listen to Julien. Yeah, I, this is my bet. Let's see. Uh, okay, he's coming back. Let's okay, see what he's back. Saying. All right. Okay. Um, you're see. back. You're not back on Twitter. It says I'm, it says I'm still a listener on Twitter. Uh, I can't see you. Can you disconnect and reconnect again, please? Sometimes it happens on Twitter, on the Twitter spaces. We had the same problem last week. Okay. On faces of ALX. Okay, I'm back as a listener. Okay, where are you? I can't see you. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, there's like uh, 700 people. Can you uh, request uh, the mic? Okay, I sent a request. Got it. I see you. Okay. All right. Now you should be able to speak. Right. Can you okay, speak? I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, that works. That works. Awesome. All right. So, Max, what would you do differently if you had to restart the program, knowing that you know you had to differ twice? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, when I first got into the program, um, there was an individual um, named Justin Marsh um, who got accepted um, in cohort one. So we um, linked up together. We're going through um, the C programming book and we were like trying to figure out the, the questions. But he was so knowledgeable, you know, uh, he's probably one of the first students I looked up at him, Tim. Um, other, I'm not going through that. But anyway, he was so knowledgeable, like working with him. It was like, man, this guy knows everything. So I was like, I told myself, like, oh, I'll. I'll I'll learn it once I get to Hobart in school. You know, I def so looking back, I'll prepare myself more um, before I got to Hobart in school, went through the books, the required readings that they told us to do. Um, you know, ask and when I and get in school, ask questions, ask more questions, ask questions till you're blue in the face. Cause you can't get you can't get kicked out of school for asking too many questions. You know, you know, um, even like, and honestly, I'm like, don't be candid. Like, I didn't want to bother Julian, you know, when I, you know, you know, um, I don't want to bother Julian or Guillaume or anything like that, because they're working. I know I'm going to bother certain people, you know, but even bother them, you know, even they get, even they get annoyed with you. Cause you know what, at the end of the day, you're, you're return on their investment. So they need you to succeed as much as you want to succeed. So ask questions, um, as, as many questions you can. And, but, but really honestly for myself, it was, I should have prepared a lot better before I got to Hobart in school by going through the book and, um, working with, uh, with Justin a little bit more. Oh, that's interesting. So, uh, you know, we just uh, released like a website for people who got accepted so that they can start, you know, uh, pre-working before they get to uh, to the program now. So it's yeah. pretty cool to hear that, you know, this is what, you know, you would have done. This was also like a request like a lot of a lot of students. I was completely wrong because like while you were like reconnecting, I was trying to guess what you would say. And mm -hmm. like you didn't say that. So, you know, now what did what, 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 you say? What you say? <laughs> So I said, um, you know, ask more questions earlier in the program, like to, to people. I mean, you said it a little bit, but, you know, like not as much. And I said, you know, probably trust the process more and listen to Julian a little bit more. Well, definitely trust the process. Definitely ask more questions. I mean, 50 50 on the joke. <laughs> you know what you're talking about. You definitely know, you know what you're talking about. Sounds good. Uh, DHV, what's, what was the second question? 
the question was the fact that um, when Pat completed the SD program, was it really grabs with the concept? Or like, did he feel like, yes, I have a right, I'm a developer, I can do everything, or there were gaps in between his skill and his knowledge? Was there anything that was missing even though he had completed the program? Oh, oh, so do you hear what she said? Yeah, I think I think we did. Yeah, like so, but like roughly was. Um, and DHV, correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but it's like you know, once you finish the program, did you feel you know that you were like a software engineer and ready to uh, go on the job market? <laughs> no, no, but that that was more of a, a confidence issue myself, you know. Um, I was a nervous, I was a wreck, nervous wreck going through the interview process. And, you know, I didn't believe in myself. And uh, like you said before, like, I don't get, you notice, I don't give myself any credit, you know, um, but something I still struggle with till, till today, you know, it wasn't until my first, maybe first two interviews that were, which I completely bombed at. And I was like, why am I, why am I failing? Because this is the same stuff I, they asked me at Harvard school. It might be a little bit different question, but I knew, like I was failing Git questions, questions about Git. And um, pull requests and stuff like stuff like that because I thought you had to be some super genius and it was like no that's not not what it is so it took me a while even after my I lost my job at J Crew I still didn't feel like a software engineer it wasn't until I got the pipe stream and um you know really applied everything I learned at school to pipe stream like oh I am an engineer it's not you know it's not what you see on TV like you just sit down and just type away um there's a lot of reading a lot of googling you know it's not what I thought you know what I saw on TV you know um. And that it takes years for you to get to that. Um, I'm, I'm still not there yet. So um, yeah, this is, it took me a couple of years to realize that I am a software engineer and I say, and for me to say it proudly as well. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, no, I did not feel like a software engineer, but I had nothing to do with the school, it had all to do with me, you know? So once you get through the program, you graduate, you're, you're, a, software, you're a software engineer, just keep on pushing. Yeah, and if I could add to that, like, you know, Maybe you are, but maybe you're not. Like it's it's uh, it's uh, to become a software engineer. At one point, you need to have like a little bit of experience being a software engineer, right? So you were a software engineer student. That's good. Now you have like skills, but now you have to apply those skills to build something concrete, and then you can say you're a software engineer. So I don't even know that like you are a software engineer after you finish the school because you need that experience to actually say yes. You know, people are paying me for doing that, or like I'm building a startup, and then you know. I received, I have users, then yes, you can say you have became, you have become a software engineer. It's not just about the hard skills. It's about applying them to something concrete. Uh, this is very important. Like if you, if you're like the fastest man on earth, but you never do like any competition, you're probably not officially the fastest, fastest man on earth. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Uh, and DHV, you had like third question. Yeah. Um, my final question. Uh, Matt mentioned that you was a Uh, so, so Max, if you want to unmute yourself and repeat the question uh, for the YouTube audience and um, and answer. I'm sorry. Let me. See. I was sorry. I, that's, it's hard for me to hear on the Twitter, and then um, I heard. I heard. I heard. What was the question? I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so Max, uh, there's like a there's an echo. So, if you can mute to one of the the two, it would be great. Uh, but the question is, DHB, correct me if I'm wrong. But the question is like you have like all those like challenges, whether it's mindset or like technical, how do you do, how did you overcome that uh, throughout your career? Uh, okay, yeah, that's just repeating uh, the questions over and over again. Um, that's, that's, that's it. Um, like with linked list, that, oh, that I shiver till, till today. Like that was probably one of the hardest things I've done at the school. Um, I just do it over and over again till you get it. You know, and then I went to sleep sometimes and I repeated the question over again 
when I woke up in the morning. Um, like for me, repetition was key. And but don't do it from from like memory. Really think really, really think about the question and break it down. Don't do it like oh, don't don't say like oh, I know the question already. I can answer it. Really break it down so you really know you know what you're talking about. And then teach somebody else. That will help. That help me as well by talking about talking about it with somebody else. And um, you know, see where your gaps are with your knowledge, and they get to get filled back in. You know, and embrace the failure. That's it. Embrace the failure. You know, I can't say that enough. You know, um, cause you're not gonna be successful. You want to just come and be successful. It's not gonna. It's not gonna. You're not gonna get it far ahead. Embrace the failure. You know, sometimes I was. I did. I got something wrong. I was like, good. I got this wrong. Let me work on this too, so I can improve myself. Um, so that's how I got, overcame the the challenges of the technical questions. Um, just by failing and just going over, just doing it again. And brace the failure and like repeat until you got it. It's a, it's a great one, Max. Um, Edo Gotu, do you want to ask your questions to uh, Max? Edo Gotu Gideon, welcome. Yeah, I think I think we do. So for the for for everybody on YouTube, we're taking questions from Twitter, and then we're gonna repeat the, the questions before we answer. So that's why sometimes you know, like now from now on, you, you, there's gonna be like some blanks. But essentially, the question is, um, you have you have basically a, like to put like it like in in shorts. You have like a job right now, and but you don't feel that you have the the basics. Yeah, it's a one year long. You don't think you you have the basics, and that's why you you came into ALX uh, to learn like the basics and like what would be like the best uh, course of action. Should you resign from your job to focus on this? Should you do both because you're struggling? It's really hard for now. Um, you know what's what's your what's your advice, Max? Oh man, learn and get paid at the same time. Um, if you can't, I mean, don't get in trouble. But if you can learn, if you have any free time at your job, I would. Go over some C programming questions while you're working, but like I said, don't get in trouble because what I'm saying. Um, but if you can't do that, you need to find the time to balance it out within your day. I don't know if you have a family or anything like that. Um, lucky enough for myself, it's just me. So, um, like when I was at Pipestream, I was able to you know do my job at Pipestream and then go home and work on some different programming um, programming questions. You know, um, so just the straightforward answer for myself is just finding the time within your schedule to, to work on it. I won't say resign, especially in this climate with um, the job market and stuff like that. I wouldn't, I would stay on as long until they, until they have to fire you, you know, but like I said, work as hard as you can and, you know, work at your C programming every day till you get it, you know, um, you know, don't take any, don't, don't skip any days. Of course, take a break. You got to take breaks because your brain needs to recover, but any free time that you have, just work on it. You know, that's what I did. Um, when I was at school, um, stuff I wasn't good at, I just worked on it until I got it, you know, and I wish I could come up with some magical answer, like some diet pill answer, but it's not just work at it, work hard and build the time that you have. And then you'll, you'll get it. Trust me on that. As long as you work hard, you'll, you'll get it. 
Yeah, I, I tend to agree with what Mike says. Like it's it's the, the answer is going to be like depending on your context. Um, if you have a family, if you don't have a family, like do you have the time? You know, like can you make both work? Uh, but probably like if you need like if you need the salary, that just like the job is the priority. And if you have no issue with salary, probably the study is the priority. Um, so, you know, take that home, like process it and like, you know, make the best decision for yourself. Um, Wilfred, do you want to ask your question to Max? Winfred, are you still with us? Thanks. It's a great question, Winfred. Um, so the question is, um, you know, like when, when you go through the program, uh, you're like still like beginners. And then suddenly you got like interview questions, whether it's interview prep or actual questions about, you know, like some of the concepts you just learned, but you don't master them yet. And you're not allowed to use Google because these are like, you know, basically the basics of computer science. So how do you overcome that? And how do you overcome the feeling that you you know nothing and you're so beginner um you know like to, but, but still like being successful how do you work that out uh for me just being honest with myself um because i i at the time i was a beginner and even till today six years in i'm still a beginner um i remember a long time ago my a part of Holman school i read a um uh article that says it takes you 10 years to become a a uh, full stack senior engineer. I'm like, oh, this is nonsense. But now that I'm in it, I'm like, oh yeah, I see what you're talking about. You know, so just be honest with yourself. You, you are a beginner, um, but that's that's fine because the job market needs beginners. They need people. Um, this the, the job market is so behind with engineers that they need people that they know. They need, you need to need know at least the fundamentals for a lot of jobs. You know, and the ability to learn. You know, that's what Hover School is about. ALX is about that learning how to learn, and that's what companies want. They want to see. There's plenty of times I, I got hired by a job and they I didn't know something, but they saw that I just said I could learn this. So, so that's part of my answer to the question. The other thing, <laughs> don't you stop using Google. It just goes through the struggle of of, of struggling through the, the the interview questions. You know, if you and every interview that I had, if I didn't know a question, I wrote it down and I, I went over it on my own afterwards. Of course, I used Google to get the the, the knowledge of it, but then I if I felt like I could answer this technical question on my own, you know, I put a timer on sometimes. And sometimes I didn't put a timer on, you know, sometimes it just took an hour or so just to try to figure it out on my own and just break it down as much as possible until I, until I got it, you know? Um, so like I said earlier, earlier in, a, in the interview, I mean, <clears throat> early, t- early, on, early on today when I was talking to everybody, like, yes, you're going to get discouraged. And I can say, or say, don't get discouraged, but you're going to get discouraged. That's, that's human nature, but don't let it hold you back. Don't let it hold you back. I'm pretty sure, and I'm talking to everyone on this chat right now, I'm pretty sure that you had a struggle in your life before you went to went through ALX, before you went through this program, but you still made it through. Like, think about your, the last thing you were stressing about or you struggled with and how did, like, where are, where are you today? Did that did that mess you up? No, like, you're, you're still here today. You're still living. Like, you're still good. So it's, it's on a suck in the meantime, but remember, like, you have a goal and it's just going to make you better. Go through that struggle. Like I said, embrace the, fa- the failure, embrace the struggle. And um, you know, just work work at it. So um, yeah, kind of questions. Just try to work at it as best as you can without Google. Use someone. Use use someone else. Talk to somebody else with the type of, about the type of technical questions to break it down together. And um, that, in my opinion, would be very helpful instead of just going to Google try to find out um the answer or or um yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'm rambling. Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a great uh, it's a great answer. It's like 
you know, if you don't know something and like the best uh, gift is that you know you don't know it so that you can prepare for the next time. And a lot of the time, like, I, I I've actually like don't know anybody who aced the first interview, you know, and then got the job right away. Most of the time it's, uh, hey, like I'm going to do the first interview. I think I'm prepared, but, you know, like somehow, you know, it didn't work out like for many reasons. Like it's the first time you're doing the interview, so it's stressful. Um, you're not used like to those types of questions, even though like you prepared, there's a lot of stress. And then, you know, you go back home and say like, oh, like, you know, it was like very bad. And then you say, okay, like, what should I have done? Like, even if you don't know, you can ask your peers now because now you have like a network and you can look online, you can look on Google and then like you learn from that uh, experience. And then the next time you're going to do it, then you have a little bit more experience. So you're a little bit less stressed. And then you know that it's pot potentially you're going to get this question. Maybe not. And then like, maybe you're going to fail again and then fail again until you get like, until you nail it. Um, some of the things that, uh, you know, and, and, and we know that like at Whole Button, at ALX, we push you outside of your comfort zone all the time to make sure that you are prepared for, you know, the workplace. And as Max said, like, we try to replicate as much as we can, like what you're going to encounter, like while you work. And it's not going to be, hey, like, this is the feature you're going to build. This is the how to. No, it's like build this feature, correct this bug. I have no idea how it's done, but like just do it. Right. And so, like, a lot of the time, you don't know everything. And like, most of the engineers on the job, they don't know everything. They're going to have to talk to other people, people in their team, people in other teams. Uh, they're going to have to look on Google and our, our, our books or like whatever it is. And like, maybe go to conferences, to forums to get the solution, to get the tools, to get a better way to do things. So, it's like an, uh, like, it's a, never ending job like and i really like the mindset of max and i think you know one of the reasons he grew so much is that he always considered himself as a junior software engineer like and like he wants to learn more all the time and this is something that is crucial you know once you're done with alx once you're done with whole button you really want to take this as okay like this is just one step that i've done and i have like probably 10 more steps steps right 10 years to become senior software engineer 10 years to become like uh, you know the guy in the movie who's just like and then like everything <laughs> happens I mean, it probably never happens but <clears throat> it's a it's a it's it's again it's a mindset and like okay like every time you fail at something like what do you do with this failure are you gonna you know work on it or are you gonna cry on your sofa and watch netflix <laughs> like you are you're, you're like kind of raised your hand max like did you want to add something oh no yeah so one thing um so I, I can't I can't hammer on this enough, especially when I interview people. I interviewed a lot of people that they were great technically. They knew every, they they killed the answers, but they weren't they weren't personal, you know. So for me, I think that that, that helped me out a lot with the interview process. Um, you know, I wasn't the greatest at answering the technical questions, but I was at I was personal. I I asked questions. I I made the person I was interviewed with laugh. Um, I was just my, and I was just like, I just talk, you know, that show that you have a, a personality, you know, um, or whatever strength you have outside of technical, um, answering technical que um, questions, let that shine, you know, because I felt like that has helped me a lot with inter interviews because I, I have so many job offers that, that I'm very grateful for. And I talked to my other peers who were great technically and they were struggling. And I'm like, and I, for me, I was like, I don't know what they asked me, like, what did I do? I was like, I don't know. I just, you know, it was myself. And um, so just show that you're, you're be positive and show you uh, your good person, be a good personality. And that would definitely help along the way. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Like being positive is like so, so, so important for yourself, but also like for your career. Um, all right, maybe one last question because it's already like an hour and a half. <clears throat> uh, maybe Kiyaki, uh, do you want to ask your questions to Max?
So, so the question is like, is it easy to find a job, especially in the context of today where, you know, we hear when we read a lot of headlines of people like being, you know, laid off and like, is it easier to go like to backend or front end? Hmm, okay. Um, so is it easy for front end or front end or back end? I don't know. Cause I'm, I'm neither, I'm neither of those, <laughs> neither of those, um, um, I'm neither one of them, um, you know, but all companies that need both, they need them. Um, so with my job, I wish I could really answer that. It was equal for both. I, I needed both for um, my team, um, but that's, that's different across the board. It's different for like how big the company is or, but from my experience that both are, both are needed. Um, I wish I could answer that question better, but um Right now, yeah, the job market right now is is I can tell the difference right now. Um, you know, like I said, I just got laid off, and um, I can tell just, there are a lot less job postings out now than there were before. Um, but I'm not saying that to discourage you and to be honest, but things will change eventually. Just right now, how the world is, inflation and stuff like that. Um, stuff is going, you know, stuff is going crazy, and a lot of companies are trying to figure out what they need to do. Um, so yes, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit harder. Uh, a lot more competition out there. But that means nothing. You're still gonna find a job because they need. They still need engineers. There's lots. There's still reports out there that saying engineers are still needed. We're still behind 30 plus years, um, so <laughs> they're still needed. You know. So right now, like in in, in North America, is 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 a little bit down right now. Inflation, recession, all that. But it will come back. It's just how that's how the, how how it is. Just how the market is. Um, so don't don't let that discourage you. Because even for myself, like I see. There's not a lot of SRE jobs out here, out there right now, you know, but that gives you more opportunity to learn, you know, and I honestly, I tell people this all the time. You can't rush the days. You can't rush the time. So don't rush anything. Like you'll find your job when it, when it, when it's the right opportunity for you, you know, so you want to be front, front end developer, focus on that. You want to be back end developer, focus on that. I, I'll say this, whatever interests you the most, focus on that. Um, I know people, all people, my cohorts, they, they did jobs they didn't want to do because the opportunity was available. And they weren't, they were happy, but they weren't supremely happy. Folk, find a job that you want to do. So it won't be, it won't be front end, back end, DevOps, um, web design, full stack. Go what you go, what you want to go after what you want to do. That's my, that's my um, opinion. And I, you'll, I feel like you'll find a job when you go after what you really want to do. Yeah, I, I second that. This is very important. Um, one thing that, um, I want to add on like the, the job market right now. Um, I, I see a lot of different, uh, you know, feedback from the market. So there's like all those headlines, as you know, especially in the US, like, you know, Google and uh, I don't know if Google, did Google like make some layoff? Like, yeah, I think a little bit. And like Facebook, like this is the third one and like, uh, you know, Salesforce. And, but at the end of the day, like we also received like the, like the, the last report on the, on the job market and 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 this is the best job market ever for the US like ever in the history of the US so like you like you really want to like dig in uh, a little bit more than just like the headlines like headlines are like very frightening all the time because that's how they make their money um it's like always like the extreme like you know the title you know like something explodes like this is the the worst in the world and everything and you always like if you look if you look at the news today it's like it's always the end of the world Right. So you, you have to do your own research. And like, if you look at the data, it's not that bad. Um, I had, I had like a lot of my friends, I mean, not a lot of my friends, but I have a few of my friends uh, who lost their jobs and all of them have found like, you know, something, you know, some of them like better paid uh, in the next three months. Um, so it's, uh, and you know, Max like took vacations. And so it's, uh, it, it doesn't seem very stressed. So <clears throat> It's, uh, I know it's frightening, especially when, you know, you start a career, like you're here to build your career, like you, you, you're studying and you're like, you put a lot of efforts, um, just like focus on that and like, don't think about anything else than this and certainly don't look at the news and do not make any decisions based on headlines. Um, yeah. Um, Max, do you have time for maybe a last one? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, King AJ. Do you want to ask your question to Max? Hello.
Yeah. So the question for um, for everybody on YouTube is, um, you know, King AJ is like at the end of the program and like he passes the checks and he gets, uh, you know, good scores, I assume, because he passes the checks. Uh, he loves the checker. He loves Betty, right? He didn't say it, but I, you know, I, I have a feeling. Um, <laughs> but like, so, but like, he doesn't feel that like he masters like all those data structures and all those like algorithms. Like, so how, how do you make sure that you, uh, you know how to use them uh, in, in, in the right context? And how do you make sure you master them enough to be, you know, hired, I guess? <laughs> My question will be the same. Just do it again. <laughs> do it again to you know. Just like, like I, I, I get everyone on, the, on this chat on Twitter and I see a lot of, and this is my son ignorant, I'm, I'm assuming, but I see a lot of African names, you know, but I'm taking like, you understand what I'm saying. So, you know, English, and I'm, I'm assuming you know, you know another language. I don't know English, you know. So I admire people that know more than one language. But at the same time, I knew it was a hard time for you to learn a different language. And how did you learn it? You just kept you kept on going over it. You kept on doing it, learning it, talking to other people. And the same thing for um, for, for for this, you know. Do it again. Go over it. Talk, talk to other people. Learn it till you really feel confident, you know. Talk to someone about it. For me, I talk to somebody about it. Like, the thing, teach somebody. Like teach your mother or your your girl your your partner um, anyone someone on the street talk to talk to someone about it and see how much you know and then see the see see um what gaps you don't know and you fill it in and go back to the drawing board so like I said just just do it all over again and also it depends on what 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 um, job you want you know some things you might not need to know every little thing for the um, the job that you're applying for. So figure out what job you wanted you're working for and figure out what they're looking for. You know, you don't need to know every um everything, um, every algorithm, um, or you don't need to know everything within um within front end or back end or within the operating system. It all depends on what you're looking for, trying to do. So um once you figure out oh, figure out what excuse me, what you're trying to do, um look into a little bit more and see what they want from that specific job and then hone in on that so you really master your skills. But if you're not really comfortable with something, and it's, it's in the back of your mind that you want to that it's bothering you, then go back to it and work on it till you till you're comfortable with it. Um, you know, like I said, like my other um, uh, answers. I wish I could give you a way better answer that sounded magical, but <laughs> this is uh, what worked for me. Just do it till you're comfortable with it, and um, you can move and until you walk away from it, saying, you know what, I'm good at this. I can move on to something else. Yeah, thanks, Max. So uh, essentially, you know, repeat and repeat and repeat until you get it and uh, start and like, you know, never, ever uh, stop learning. Right. And I really love the fact that, you know, during this conversation, it was like very clear. Like, so first you were very transparent about like what you did well, what you did not do well. So thanks a lot for sharing a lot of like personal stories. I think it resonates a lot, um, you know, in, in for the students. Um, and like what I really appreciate and like like I'm really like uh, uh, I think I like hearing is like you consider yourself as a student all the time. Like even though now you are a software engineer, you are paid for that. Uh, you're paid well, you mentioned, and you still like consider yourself as a student. And that's, you know, why you had this career, I think, is you not take everything for granted. You're not entitled at all. It's like, yeah, if I don't if I have a failure, then you take advantage of it in the sense that you're going to learn out of it or you can take vacation. Um, like, and, and having this positive mindset is I think something that I really, I really love about you. Um, and, you know, I think you know, why we, we became friends. Um, thanks a lot for all your, for your time, um, Max. Wow. It took like an hour and, and 40 minutes to, uh, to answer all the questions of the students and like share your, your story. Thanks a lot. Um, no what's, what's the best way for, for students to contact you and to keep in touch and like follow your, your uh, your career is it oh wow is it, uh, you know what how can they follow you i'm so bad on social media i wish i could please connect with me on on twitter um mb johnson 31 and also on linkedin um i don't know my linkedin name but um please if you have any questions um please reach out to me you know i'll answer all the questions i, I, I can because i know the feeling when you ask someone a question they don't get back to you i'll do my best i might end not answer it right then and there but i'll answer your question um, but yeah, Twitter on LinkedIn, um, my, my IG, um, uh, handle, I 
I could give you that through um, direct direct messages as well. I guess I'm pretty much an open book. I'm here to help. I want everyone to su- succeed. I know the feeling of going through the process and struggling. So please, I, I please like please reach out to me. I um, I'll answer any questions I possibly can. Thanks a lot, Max. I get, like um, this. Yeah, it shows like how big of a heart you have, um, and I'm I'm really glad that like people like uh, witnessed that today. Thanks a lot again for your time. Thanks everybody no for problem. listening.